How's it going, everybody? It's your boy, Mike, from Seattle. And today, I have the privilege of bringing you an interview with my mentor, Mark. Mark, go ahead and say hey. Hey, how you doing there, Mike? Thanks so much for having me here. Happy to be here with you. Uh, so what I wanted to do today was have a couple of conversations with you. So for those people who followed my channel over the last few years, they know that I reference you all the time as OB Mark Kenobi, my mentor, someone who's helped me to get started investing in out-of-state real estate in the Midwest. Um, and what I thought would be beneficial for the folks who have sent me messages both on Instagram or comments on YouTube is to talk about how they could find a mentor for themselves. So there's a couple questions I want to ask you. Number one. What led you to reach out to me as a potential mentee? All right, sounds good. It's a good question. All right, I'm going to tell you briefly what led me to introduce myself to you, but what I'm also going to talk about what led me to that point in my life where I'd be willing to reach out, okay? But basically, I watched a video by Michael Zuber, because I had been watching the One Rental at a Time channel, and when he interviewed you, when I heard either him or you say that you were a police officer, that's when I lit up. It's like, finally, another police officer who's investing in real estate. So as soon as I could, by then I knew how, knew how to contact uh, Michael Zuber. So I reached out, asked him to put me in, into contact with you, which led us to today. All right, backing up just a bit, as a police officer, I became the crime prevention officer. When I became the crime prevention officer, I was asked to think outside of the box because the word said to me or something like, Crime prevention historically has not worked. It's taught people how to lock doors, lock the windows, but it doesn't reduce crime. So I sat back and I thought, what can we do? I looked into it and I found that the folks in our prisons, 90 some percent of them are high school dropouts and or read at a low reading level. And I was like, well, I can't help the folks locked up. What about all these kids? All these beautiful kids in school, statistically, some of them will end up in prison. So I started going into elementary school classrooms, reading to kids. I contacted a publishing company. They started donating books to me. And over a period of years, I, donate, I gave away out 35,000 plus free books. And I read to probably thousands of classes in three or four different states. And that changed me as a person because it made me the sort of person I found I enjoyed helping other people on their journey to life, to, edu to educate. That's my goal is to help, help to educate others. So anyway, fast forward to now, you're a police officer, I'm a retired police officer. You like real estate, I like real estate. If I can help you in some fashion to get going, great. <laughs> yeah, it, well, and you know, I think a lot of people don't understand like the bond that police officers share, you know, even though you're from the East coast and I'm from the West coast right. and you retired around the time that I'm just getting started as a rookie. Um, you know, just that there's, there's the, the, the brotherhood of blue, the police officer. So when you reached out to me, when I first heard, heard from you, you know, I, I'm always skeptical of anyone who talks to me, like, you know, are they a scammer? Is there something wrong with this person? But when I heard like, oh, you're a police officer as well, instantly there was a, a level of trust there just because of that shared life experience and occupation. But, but for the people out there who don't happen to be cops and don't have a very successful investing cop mentor reaching out to them, how can they find someone to mentor them and, and help them gain the confidence and knowledge and then hopefully success that I've had thanks to my relationship with you. Sure. Well, basically, if I'm talking to someone who's interested in getting investing, there's three things they can do because everybody's different in how they will learn and et cetera, et cetera. One is look at real estate books. You have books behind you. If you, some people could read those books and they're, get, they're being mentored to by the words written by Michael Zuber or by whoever it may be that's reading them. A second way is to go online, um, biggerpockets.com. It's a real estate site. You can you could be a fly on the wall and read the post. No one's gonna know who you are, but you can get an education. The third way is no matter where you live at, look up your local real estate meetup group. Every area has a local real, real estate meetup group. If your area doesn't, start one. Just go to meetup.com and start a new group. But if you go to an established meetup group, 
be the fly on the wall, be the guy that just stands there. Don't, even if you're extroverted, try to be quiet. Yes, if someone walks up, introduce yourself, but just try to listen and to learn because you will recognize you will have someone else who should be quiet, but that isn't quiet. You have someone else who is the guy who owns 100 rental units. You're going to have someone else who just bought their first. You might have a banker. You might have a loan originator. You might have whoever you may have there. You don't know who will be there, and they don't know who you are. So just kind of sit back, try to learn, and by the end of that first meeting, odds are you have made at least one contact. That doesn't mean that's your future mentor, but you've opened the door. And by meeting one person, you will you will meet more people. Right. You've also told me about the uh, the problem of being the newbie. You said this is a common thing that a lot of people are familiar with. Will you explain that real quick? Sure. When I was investing in stocks, there's a website called Fool.com, Motley Fool. They have what's called message boards. And when we were posting there, the, the veterans, we would post there. And, and it happens even now. Newbies come along and they just jump right in. And this is an online site where you type and type your post out. And you can always recognize a newbie. They might be typing all capitals as an example. They might be telling everyone how they need to invest. Not saying this is how I invest. This is how you need to invest. And oh, by the way, I'm 21 years old. <laughs> same same thing for real estate sometimes you always you and i could go to a meeting we're in quotes veteran real estate investors but there may be somebody who's young a little green behind the ears who if you don't know any better you think they're the expert but they haven't even bought their first rental yet so that's the the newbie yeah, if I could relate that to people so they can understand a little bit more. In in the policing world, which again, Mark is a cop, done it for a lot longer than I did, or than I am, uh, and I'm an officer as well. Uh, you have this problem as well, the rookie, the rookie officer, the hot shot, the hot head, the one who's fresh out of the academy, thinks he has all the answers, thinks he knows how to handle everything. And then you have your senior veteran officer, someone like Mark who's been around for a long time. And the way that those two officers handle the same call, maybe something like a domestic violence call, the senior officer has been on hundreds, if not probably thousands, and knows – you don't just walk up to the front door and knock. You need to you know, check around the perimeter, secure the area, make sure you have sufficient backup before you just walk into a trap. The rookie officer may just go running in there to save the day and get himself hurt or worse. Um, and so just like in that situation, when you're the new guy, the best thing that you can do, and one of the best things that I did when I was a brand new officer was let everyone with more experience just tell me what to do until their experience became my experience. And with real estate investing, I have copied and pasted your strategies into my life. You thought about going into Indiana, so I thought about going to Indiana. You bought rentals from a turnkey property, so I bought rentals from a turnkey property provider. You used a certain property manager, I stole your property manager. You did seller finance, I st Pretty much I am just a copycat version of you and it's served me pretty well. So Mark, what do you think of that strategy? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good strategy because what you've done is you have found someone who has a little bit more experience than you and you, you you're not writing their my you're not writing my coattails you're copying what I'm doing because you're learning from me let me make the mistakes because I made them in the past I on my channel I talk about mistakes I've made and then you won't make the same mistakes but if I make the correct decisions Sure, copy me. It's going to help you out. So, and, and it certainly has. Uh, clearly, you know, I don't. I don't like to say my success because I feel like I've had success, but I'm not yet successful. But you know, I have a net worth of four hundred thousand dollars, which puts me in the top seven percent. You're the one who told me this. Puts me in the top seven percent for my age range, um, and most of that's because of taking your good advice. Um, but real quick, I'm glad that you mentioned the past. The past. You made mistakes in the past. For the next video, I want to talk to you about the dot-com bubble burst and the 2007-2008 recession and what you were doing at those times to navigate through those crashes and what your thoughts are on the next crash. So I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.